tremendous love that you have for us. We thank you, Father, that you gave us your word through this Bible so that we can know your heart and know your will and to know your desires for our lives here on the earth. And so today we thank you for the word that you've prepared for us to receive. Father, let this word go forth with power, anointing, clarity, and understanding. Let deliverance, salvation, healings, increase miracles, and breakthroughs be the fruit of this message today. Satan, you are defeated, foe. We command you to cancel every plan, scheme, and assignment against this word in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we so welcome your presence. I ask Holy Spirit that you would word my mouth. Holy Spirit, let me, let me say only those things that God would have me say. And let the words that come out of my mouth be accurate. The words that God himself speaks into our hearts. And we thank you, Father, that our hearts are good soil. Your word is great seed. Let this word bring increase not only to, to our lives personally, but to our families, to this church, this city, and this region. Father, as this message is heard all over the world, over the television airways and, and over the internet, let everyone that hears this word receive increase in their life from you, Father God. As this word is preached, Father, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in our lives here on earth, just as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Give God another great big clap offering of praise. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We'll turn to Mark eleven twenty two. Mark eleven twenty two, and uh, we are we're in the home stretch on this series of uh, the power of your words. The power of your words. The power of your words. Your words have tremendous power. Amen. Mark eleven twenty two. 22, Jesus is speaking. He's saying, uh, speaking to his disciples. Uh, he's responding to, to Peter and the gang being really amazed uh, at this fig tree that Jesus had spoke to on the previous day. Jesus spoke to this fig tree. And he told the fig tree, he said, no man ever eat fruit from me again. And when he spoke to the tree, he walked away. They went into Jerusalem. And then as they were headed back out of Jerusalem, they walked past the tree. Peter looked over and saw the tree had died with it from the roots, and he was astonished at it. He said, look at that tree. It, that's the one you spoke to, and it's dead. It did just what you told it to do. And then Jesus responds in verse 22. He says, have faith in God, or have the God kind of faith. What is he saying? What you saw me do to that tree, if you have the God kind of faith, you can do the same thing. Then he goes on in verse 23 to describe what the God kind of faith is like. And in verse 23, he says, I tell you the truth, if anyone does what? If anyone? If anyone? So Jesus is saying you have to open your mouth. He says, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, guess what? It'll be done for him. The King James Version says he will have whatsoever he says. Amen. And uh, I, I kind of like the NIV uh, in this particular ending of this verse. It said it'll be done for him. What that means is that when we speak, when we speak, someone else carries out the command and brings it to pass in our life. So Jesus is saying the God kind of faith is a kind of faith that speaks to a situation and what is spoken comes to pass. If you believe what you say will happen, it'll happen. Amen. And hopefully over this, these weeks that, we've, uh, that the Holy Spirit has led me to teach on this, you have began to put your words in order. And, and, and you, you become a person who doesn't just allow anything to come out of their mouths. And, and, and you're a person... Who, who only says what they want to see in their life, amen? And you're not the type of person that does not have discipline and control over their tongue, amen? Because you understand how powerful your words are. Very quickly, 
uh, let's turn to uh, the book of Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Well, no, I'm, I'm doing the Holy Spirit. Said, James chapter 3. James chapter 3. We're just going to read these quickly. Just reinforcing the power of your tongue. James 3 and 2 says, We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he he is perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. And, and the word body, you're able to keep your whole body in check. What that scripture literally means is if you can control your words, you can control your life. If you can control your words, you can control your life. Amen. Amen. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. I, I love when the Bible teaches us. <laughs> I do. I love, I love what the Bible teaches us. Uh, because when the Bible teaches us, uh, you can't get you can't get upset with me. Amen. When the Bible, when we're going to Scripture and the Scripture is teaching us, you can't you can't get upset because I read it. Because it's the Word of of God, Amen. And I'm telling you, we've 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 gone we've we've studied this thing out in the Word of God, and we discovered how important our tongue is. In Matthew 12 and 33, Jesus said, make a tree good, its fruit will be good. Make a tree bad, its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized or known by its fruit. Verse 34, you brood of vipers, how can you who are evil, what? Say anything good. For out of the overflow or the abundance of the heart, the what? Mouth speaks. So don't, you know, you can quit uh, saying this. You know, you said something and, and it wasn't the right thing to say. And you can quit saying, I don't know why I said that. You can stop that. Stop saying, I don't know why I said that. Because the scripture tells us why you said it. It was in your heart, out of the abundance of the overflow of your heart, those words came out of your mouth. Those words were in you. And guess what? They were in you not because you thought about them or said them once. <laughs> it says, out of the overflow out of the abundance so evidently man that stuff that stuff is is running over <laughs> out of the abundance of the overflow of the heart the mouth what the mouth speaks the good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him I don't have time to teach this out today but what gets stored up in you the the good that comes out of you is the good that stores is stored up in you the way you store good up in you is with your words and we're going to touch on that a little bit later amen the way you store, store good up in you is through your words okay and then jesus said these words he said verse 36 but i tell you that men will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every careless word that they have spoken for by your words you'll be acquitted and by your words You'll be condemned. Amen. So what does that teach us about our words? Now that was a pop quiz. Our words have power. Amen. Uh, turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Ephesians 4 and 29. And uh, we're going to look at it in the NIV. And Paul is writing this letter. The book of Ephesians is a letter that Paul wrote to the church in this city called Ephesus. That's why it's called Ephesians. And uh, so one of the things that the Holy Spirit prompted him to write about was what we're getting ready to read here in verse 29. Look at what he says in verse 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Y'all see that? Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth but only what is helpful for building others up so this scripture is saying you should never say anything let anything come out of your mouth that's going to tear someone else down ever 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 y'all catching this only let wholesome things Things that build people up. Only let those words come out 
of your mouth. If you ain't got nothing good to say about somebody, don't say anything at all. I, uh, I listened to, to Kenneth Hagin for years, and uh, on one of his uh, messages, um, he, was, he was doing a teaching, and uh, he started, uh, he was talking about, you know, people that uh, don't, don't say negative things about other folks. And uh, he said there was this guy that lived to be over 90 years old, lived to be over 90, and uh, said the guy was never sick. He said the guy never got sick, guy was, was healthy, lived over, over 90 years old. And um, uh, he said uh, uh, the one trait that this guy had in 90 years of life, he says the entire time he knew this guy, he never heard him say one negative thing about another person. He never said one negative thing about another person. Well, that knocked me out the club. <laughs> but it's the, it's the will of God for our words to build people up. It really is. That, that old saying they taught you in elementary school is one of the biggest lies you ever memorized. Sticks and stone may break my bone, but words are never heard. That's one of the biggest lies ever told. Words have destroyed people's, people's lives for decades. So, you know, say this, say, I will not allow unwholesome words to come out of my mouth. My words will be a blessing to those that I speak them to. Come on and give God praise for that. Amen. So if, if we shouldn't be using our word, you know, don't use your words to tear people up. Don't do it. You know, you know, a lot of old school dudes have to really learn this. Old school dudes have to learn this. Y'all know what I mean by old school dudes. These are, these are dudes who were trained by, by the previous generation on how to be a good man what it means to be a real man. And so, you know, so they, they, they teach you if you're going to be a real man, you know, if somebody, if somebody do something, you got to straighten them out. And even in your home, you got to keep that woman in check. And one of the ways you keep her in check is with this thing. You know, you use this thing harshly. You know, she does something you don't like, you let her know. Why don't you ever do that again? That's old school stuff. You know, being a man ruling by intimidation. Well, this scripture we just read over Ephesians said, if it ain't wholesome, if it ain't building your wife up or your kids up, don't let those words come out of your mouth. What if, what if God went off on us every time we messed up? That's the only conversation a lot of us are hear from. It. But he isn't that way with us. You know, I'm, I'm not a man because I can intimidate someone with my mouth. That don't make me a man. A great man is a man who can, who can influence a person without tearing them down. That's a great man. Amen. You know, I worked in the steel mill for 19 years. And if you know anything about the steel mill, they do cuss out there. <laughs> you know, you're especially cuss like a sailor, cuss like a steel worker. They cussed out there in that mill. What amazed people about me, and, uh, you know, when I, I, I hired in as a laborer with a shovel, when I left there, uh, I ran uh, one of the largest operating departments at, at Inland Steel at the time. Uh, had over 350 people in my department. 
uh, that, that worked for me, and I had an operating budget of uh, like $52 million a year, and that I was responsible for spending uh, every year. And uh, so I started as a laborer, and in 19 years, one of the things that amazed folks is that in 19 years, not one person ever heard me curse. <laughs> ever. Now, good thing they didn't read my mind sometimes. <laughs> Call folk be tripping sometimes in it, but I never, I never, ever curse. 19 years. And uh, now I'm just saying, I said all that to say this is it is possible to control your mouth. It is. You can do it. Amen. You know, and some of you say, well, I just, I don't know, I just can't stop cussing. If somebody put a gun to your head and said, if you cuss, I'm going to shoot you, you'd never cuss again. You'd find some other adjectives. <laughs> but I thought you said you couldn't stop. But yeah. If somebody said, I'll give you a million dollars if you don't cuss. You can control your mouth. And if you understood how powerful your words were, you, you'd want to control your mouth. Amen. So, you know, so God has been speaking to us, and, 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 and probably this week, maybe next week, I'll, I'll be concluding uh, this series. And so if we aren't supposed to use our mouths in a harsh way, and, and now that we understand that we're going to have to give an account for every word that we speak, now that we understand how powerful our words are. I mean, we've been in this Bible, and we've seen some things, haven't we? I mean, God has been teaching us that when we speak, even when we don't think anybody's listening, God's listening. And the spirit realm is listening to the words that we speak. So our words have power. And so today the Lord led me, he says, now, now uh, begin to teach them how they should use their words. Begin to teach them how they should use their words. So we're going to look at a few things here today to show you how you should begin to use your words. Are you ready? Okay. Uh, you should use your words to build up your faith. Write that down. I should use my words to build up my faith. Now, we all know what faith is. You know, faith is, is you know, the uh, Hebrews 11 one says, substance of things hope for the evidence of things not seen. But faith is also trust and confidence in God's word, authority, and power to produce something for you that you don't have the ability, power, or resources to produce for yourself. You can use your words to build your faith up. You can use your words to increase your belief in God's word, power, and authority. Did you know that? You can use your words to do it. Amen? Romans 10 and 17. Romans 10 and 17. Word of God says, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. The message is heard through the word of Christ. Uh, King James says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I can use my words to build up my faith. Well, what's the connection? How does faith come? According to the scripture. By hearing. Faith comes by hearing. So I can build up my faith with my words. All right. How do I build up my faith with my words? I speak the word out of my mouth. When I speak the word out of my mouth, I hear. And when I hear. Guess what comes? Faith comes. Got it? Now, I'm going to tell you something. I believe that this principle isn't practiced enough in the church. Uh, I believe, most, you know, we got good pe church people, good people come to church and hear preaching. But I don't believe we practice this principle of building our faith up by speaking God's word out of our mouth enough. I'm talking about speaking God's word out of your mouth outside of this sanctuary. Okay? See, you can build your faith up in any area of your life by speaking the word out of your mouth. Amen. You can build your faith up for healing by speaking healing scriptures out of your mouth. Amen. Go into the Bible, 
study scriptures on healing, open your mouth and say them out loud. For by his stripes, I was healed. By his stripes, I was healed. See, and I don't, don't say I am yet. By his stripes, I, you want to say was. That's what you want to hear yourself say. You want to hear yourself say by his stripes, I, because if I, then I. See, if I don't say was and just say I am, if I feel a symptom because I'm still in the I am, I may go into the I will be. Ah, some of y'all catch that next week. <laughs> so by stripes I, I was healed. All right, now so what do I have to do? I've got to open my mouth and say it. I got to open my mouth. He is the Lord that heals me. I got to open my mouth and say it. How many times do I say it until it overflows? See, because when you first say it, you aren't at a level of overflowing. See, now, why, why is it important to get to the level of overflow? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Well, what does it have to do with faith? Everything. Because if I fill my heart with the word to overflowing, I'll reach a point of belief. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'll reach a point of belief. Amen. Then when I reach a point of belief, when I open my mouth and speak to the mountain, I believe what I say. say because I have made this tree good by speaking the word of God out of my mouth. Come on now. This is a key. This is a biggie right here. Faith comes by hearing. So you got to hear yourself speak the word over and over and over again. The average person remains silent when they're going through problems. Especially brothers. Men. Especially men. Men brood. We're not very relational. <laughs> I'm going to move over because this one wife is saying, she, like, she should just be taking a finger pointing at her husband. Like, you're talking to him right there, so I'm going to move over here. <laughs> Men are very relational. So when, we, when we're going through things, we tend to keep our mouth And I'm here to tell you, that ain't helping you. You need to open your and use it the right way and speak the word of. So you need to speak the word of God. Even when you, when, when you ain't with, with your wife or your kids, you need to be in a room speaking the word of God. Instead of worrying about those bills. Instead of sitting in there brooding and worrying about them, you need to be opening your mouth and say, and my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You need to open your mouth. When you speak that scripture the first time, you might not believe it, but speak it again. Release it in the atmosphere. Say it again. My God supplies all of my needs. According to his riches and glory. When you say it the second time, faith is going to start coming. When it comes, say it again. And my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. What's happening? Faith is coming. What are you doing? Storing up. Storing up. I'm storing up the word of God. I keep saying it until it's overflowing. I keep saying it until my God supplies all my need, overpowers. Look at these bills. Did y'all catch it? Hmm. What are you doing? You're making the tree good. By speaking, speaking, speaking. When my body's under attack, I speak the word. Guess what? Before my body gets attacked, I speak the word. 
because I use my mouth to build up my got to speak it this works this word works by it works by faith but it works by speaking Jesus what did he say do to the mountain he didn't say stand in front of it and think about it he said open your mouth and but if you haven't built yourself up with mountain moving faith in your heart you're going to stand in front of that mountain and say, get up. You better get up and go. <laughs> and guess what that mountain going to do? We're, we're moving into some very important revelation. We're moving into to an area here. Uh, because by now, if you've been here, there should be no doubt in your mind that your words release instructions in the spirit realm. Should be no doubt in your mind. So where we are now, now I'm teaching you how to use it, how to use these words. That's where we're at now. So I got to build my faith up, and I build my faith up by hearing, by hearing, not just listening to messages, but I need to hear my own self speak. How long do I talk to myself? <laughs> you talk to yourself until it becomes your response to challenges. And you'll know when you're there. You'll know. So you just keep on speaking until you know that you're there. Yes. You know that you're there when the bill shows up and you ain't tripping no more. I know that's, right. Amen. that's when you'll know. You don't feel no butterflies in your stomach. You don't feel no fear at all. And when you get that bill, you say, hey, God! Hey, God. I heard just, yeah, I heard Jesse the planner say that. That cracked me up. He cracked that. That was so funny to me. He said when he gets a big bill in his ministry, he takes the bill and say, hey, Jesus, you got some mail. <laughs> you know, you'll know when you've spoken that word enough, when it becomes your response. And, and you'll know. Because you ain't got no fear. Amen. What have I done? I've confessed the word of God out of my mouth long enough to develop faith for that word. And it's, it takes the discipline to do it, to speak it. It's, it's good to listen to teaching. It's good to listen to CDs and things like that. But at some point, you are going to have to open your mouth and hear yourself because that's the only way you're going to reach a point in your life where you believe what you say so you can't just ride off of believing what i say the mountain only moves when you believe what you say. it was it was some dudes over in the book of acts that saw saw paul casting out devils and just because they saw Paul do it, they thought they could do it too. And they went to cast. They was called the seven sons of Sceva. And they went to cast the devil out and uh, went in there, started to cast the devil out, and the devil started manifesting. And the devil said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And then they said the dude turned on them and whipped them whipped them and stripped them naked and sent them out the house. Now, what that had to do with what I just said? They was in there riding off of Paul, but they hadn't developed their... <laughs> and one of the ways to develop your faith is opening your mouth and speaking Scripture. Speak Scripture. Don't speak opinion speak scripture 
Hey, Jesus, you became poor so that me through your poverty might become rich. Say it. And don't care who around you get mad because you say rich. Because, you know, some folks will get mad at you. So I don't care about you getting mad at me. Rich! Oh, you got an attitude? Rich! And Corinthians chapter 9 says, he'll make me rich in every way. So like I'm be generous on every again. He'll make me rich. I'm rich in every way because I'm a giver. Yeah. Yeah. Got to keep saying it. You have to say it. Come on, look at the name and say, you have to open your mouth and speak the word. It's how you build your faith up. It works. The Word of God is full of power. But you got to speak it, and it'll work for you. Ooh, I'm getting all ahead of myself. I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I ain't going to go too long today. Ain't gonna go. it, this, this works. I build my faith up by opening my own mouth. I'm not going to be silent. Yeah, now, if, if, if I'm not comfortable doing it around folks, I'm going to get to myself, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to open my mouth and speak the word of God out of my mouth. I'm going to do it. Because, see, here's the other thing speaking out of your mouth does. Every time you open your mouth and speak the word out of your mouth, you interrupt Satan's ability to talk to you. <laughs> you interrupt him. He was talking. Then you started speaking a word. Your mind does not have the capacity to focus on two things at the same time. So if I speak the word, my mind's going to go to where my will directs it to. It works. Some of y'all, the reason you haven't seen breakthrough in your marriage is because instead of you speaking the word over it, you keep saying what you see. That man get on my nerve. <laughs> I'm tired of him. He ain't never tell me he loved me. What now? Where are all those thoughts coming from? Enemy, enemy. Guarantee you, God ain't telling you that. Right. Yeah, y'all hear me? Yeah. That mean brought me no flowers. Eh? <laughs> I'm never saying nothing good. Only time that, only time, only time he. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all know, y'all fill the blank in yourself. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. He he can be nice. Only time. Did you say those things? Why don't you say what the word says? The two of us became one. My husband loves me like Christ loved the church and gave himself for. Why don't you say it? Why don't you? Why don't you? Come on now. Speak it. Let your words be released in spirit realm. And let your ears hear you say it. And how long do I say it? Till it overflows. How will I know it's overflowing? When I look at him and he ain't brought me no flowers or nothing. And I still love him. I ain't got no attitude. <laughs> Here, speak right to the mic. What'd you just say there, Dr. J? Where are my flowers? Uh-huh. <laughs> you said the wrong thing. 
Give you another opportunity. You are a mighty man of God. Okay, you did. All right, there. All right, all right. Did you hear yourself, girl? Did you hear yourself, girl? Say it again. <laughs> this works. Faith comes by. And it's, it's you hearing you. You hearing you speak the word of God out of your mouth. Quit saying you broke. Because you just heard you. And when you said you were broken, you heard you. Guess what came? Faith. Faith for what? Broke. It's true. It's true. We're laughing, but it's true. Only say what you want to see. Speak the word of God. Let me say this to you. Silence is your greatest enemy. Silence is your greatest enemy. Yeah, I, I've, I've said this if you ain't got nothing good to say. Don't say nothing at all. But when you when you in the midst of a storm, silence is your greatest enemy. It's an enemy. And what we don't understand is that silence, when we don't speak out of our own mouth, our silence gives permission for whatever activity is going on in your life to continue. <laughs> if you don't open your mouth, then you are giving permission to whatever it is tormenting you to continue. <laughs> I know it. Got scripture to prove it. Y'all know I never just talk. Turn to Genesis chapter 3. Man, I thought this was, I thought we was a home stretch, Lord. I, thought this was, I just hear the Lord saying, I'm the home stretch. You didn't leave me alone. Holy Spirit said, you didn't leave me alone. Let me do what I'm doing. <laughs> there is a time to speak. And you have to speak. If you do not, then whatever activity that is taking place in the spirit realm will continue. It will not stop. God won't stop it. I'm going to end on this point today. <laughs> he will not stop it. You in Genesis chapter 3? Verse 1. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. Who's the serpent? It's, what's the next line? He. So, who's talking? And who he talking to? He talking to Adam woman. He talking to Adam woman. I ain't going to park there. Did God really say, you must not eat fruit from any tree in the garden? And the woman said, to who? We may eat fruit from the tree in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree in the, that in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not surely die the the devil said to the woman, for God knows when you eat of it, your eyes will be open 
and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, what did she do? She took some and she ate it. All right, let's just pause right there for now. This conversation is taking place in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Who made that garden? Whose garden is it? And he put Adam in it. He is God. God is. Does he know everything? So does he know that the devil is talking to Eve, trying to get her to disobey him? Does God know that? He knows it. Did he stop her? Did he stop her? Even though he knew the impact of disobedience, knew what that was going to have on mankind. Did he stop her? So she let the devil talk to her. And instead of her instructing him, she responded to him. He asked a question, she answered his question. He spoke long enough to convince her to, and God did not stop her. Huh. That's for everybody who wants to control human beings. I'm going to control my wife. I'm going to control my kids. I'm going to keep a tight rein on them. <laughs> yep. I ain't going to let them do this. I ain't going to let them do that. I ain't going to let them go here. I ain't going to let them go there. God didn't do that. Now let's get to the, to the end here. So she took some and she ate it. And she also gave some to her who were way over on the other side. <laughs> Adam was not all the way over on the other side of the garden. He was standing right there listening to the whole conversation, but he kept his mouth shut. He did not open his mouth. And because he didn't open his mouth, he gave permission <laughs> for the devil to keep on talking. And God did not stop it. He didn't stop it because nobody opened their mouth. I don't know why I've been going through this so long. This, I'm so tired of being broke. I'm so sick of it. I'm, my mama was broke. My grandmama was broke. I've been broke all my life. I'm so tired of this going on. All you're doing is you just, the devil is the ventriloquist and your lips are just saying the thoughts that he's planning in your mind and you're just repeating what he's putting in your head instead of stopping him by opening your mouth. And as long as you remain the devil gets to do what they do. So not only did she eat, she gave it to her husband who was with her and blew it for all of us.
been bad enough, it just blew it for them. But he messed all of us up. How did we all get born into sin? Because Adam didn't open his Now, here's the whole catch here. You go back to Genesis 1 and 26, and God says, and let us make man in our image and in our likeness, and let them rule, let them rule or have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the livestock, over the cattle, over all the earth, and then it specifically said, and, and, and over all those things that creep on the ground. Yeah. The devil was a creep. Yeah. And he specifically said in 26, you have dominion over the creep. And instead of exercising his dominion, over the creep, he let the creep exercise dominion over him. How did the creep exercise dominion? The creep opened his mouth. Y'all, uh, all of us are supposed to be using our mouth to shut things down. And we just sitting back. That's a shame. We saying silly stuff. That's a shame. Well, yeah, that's going to do you a lot of good right there. Instead of saying, in the name of Jesus, I'm healed by stripes in Jesus' name. Come on now. Come on. In the name of Jesus, the word of God says, he will bless my food and water and take sickness from among me. In the name of Jesus, he promised to satisfy my days with long life. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We're not sitting here thinking about my symptoms. I'm opening my mouth. I don't know what we're going to do. That ain't what you're supposed to be saying. Because when you say you don't know what you're going to do, you just got faith for not knowing what to do. And we understand. See, see, the greatest form of exercising authority is with your, it's with your mouth. And you got to use it. If you remain silent, you will repeat the fall of Adam in that area that you're dealing with. You'll repeat it. God didn't stop the devil from talking. He ain't going to stop him from talking to you. You have to use your All Adam had to say was, Shut up! And the creep would have stopped talking. <laughs> if we could get a glimpse into the authority our words have on this planet, it would amaze you. It would absolutely amaze you. But authority that is not used is taken. There's never a void. There's never a period where there is no one in charge. Ever. So if you ain't using yours, somebody got it. And so you got to begin, you got to use your mouth. Amen. I shared this testimony several months ago 
but you know, I, I, I shared with y'all that I worked in the steel mill and didn't cuss. Well, I remember my first assignment after I got out of college was a turn foreman. I was a foreman. I was a foreman in the steel mill, in the blast furnace area, in the raw materials area. And my, my area was three quarters of a mile long. We were responsible for making sure that they had the iron ore pellets and all that stuff to fill these blast furnaces up to make this iron. That was my job. It was 91 bins of material. And my job was to make sure they always had something in them. And so, uh, so they, they uh, gave me the title of foreman, which means I have been given authority. You with me? I've been given authority. But now get this, I ain't never seen a blast furnace in my life. I ain't seen a raw materials area in my life. So I figured that they were going to thoroughly train me to handle this responsibility because they've given me. So they put me with a guy who had been up there for about 20-something years. And they said, he's going to train you to be a foreman. Well, the only problem was this dude would come to work sober and leave drunk. Wow. I'm not making this up. <laughs> I'm not making this up. So I'm following this dude around, and he's good at the beginning of this shift, but at the end of this shift... teaching me and they gave me two weeks with it the end of two weeks they gave me my own crew and these guys some of them had been up there for 30 years they knew every nook and cranny up there they knew every inch of it they knew those operations inside and out and they knew I didn't know nothing And all they saw was fresh meat. We get to come to work and do whatever we want to do because he don't know what he's doing. I don't care where he went to school. <laughs> but guess who's in? I'm, uh, I got authority. I'm a foreman. So I'll never forget, man, I'm up there. And I needed something done. And so I called one of the guys up, held my hand. We had these radios and stuff. Uh, could you meet me down here? I'm busy. Okay, when you get some time. Because I don't know nothing. Come down. I need you to take this over there, put it over there, fill that up. That's not the way we do it. Okay, well, let's just make sure that, you know, <laughs> it don't run out. You know, just make sure it don't run out. <laughs> Who's the boss? <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I didn't know. I had a title, and, and they had delegated the authority, but I didn't use it. Now, if you know me at all, you know you ain't going to punk me. I ain't going to be your punk. I just, I just ain't gonna do, that ain't going to happen. You ain't going to run me away from here. You are not going to run me away from here. So you know what I'd do? I'd go to work an hour early, sometimes two hours early. And I'd get with the guy, the foreman on previous shift, and I'd walk up and down that place, and I'd notice the state of everything up there before my crew ever showed up. Yeah. 
I didn't just sit behind my desk and say, you're going to obey me because I'm the boss. Now I had to do something. And uh, got to a point. Crew came up. Hey, come down here. I'm busy. Hey, I want you to come here now. Stop what you're doing. Because, see, I know what's going on down there. I was there an hour ago. You don't need to be down there. Get down here. I need you to take this and I need you to put it over there. That's not how we do it. That's how we're doing it now. And guess what they start saying? Okay, boss. But what did I have to do? Take authority and the way I exercised it was through my mouth. If I didn't use my mouth, they would have ran me. That's what the demons are doing. If you don't open your mouth, they're going to run you. Now, what does that mean you're going to have to do? Let me see your book. Yeah. You might have to come to work an hour early. You may, may need to get up an hour <laughs> you, may need, you may need to find out what's going on because you don't know your rights but if you come to work early start speaking this word out of your mouth when you speak that word out of your mouth God says oh just heard my word. Just heard somebody speaking my word. Boys, you know what to do. Because they spoke that word in authority. They said they're healed by the stripes of Jesus. They said they're rich in the name of Jesus. They said they have peace in Jesus' name. I heard them speak. And because they spoke out of their mouth, I'll respond. Are y'all hearing me? Start using this mouth. Build up your faith and speak the word of God and take your authority over the demonic realm in Jesus' name. Stand to your feet. Amen. Give God praise for the word today. There is a time to speak. You got to use your mouth. Are y'all hearing me? Your words have power. And I'm going to tell you something. See, because this, this, this thing, it, the more you use your authority, the more comfortable you become with it. Y'all hear what I said? The more you use, the more comfortable you become with it. And so... Uh, You've got to begin to practice now, speaking the word of God. you got to start speaking it. If you if you, if you got an area in your life that does not look like what the scripture says it should, then you got to begin to get into that word, open your mouth, and speak it in Jesus' name. Amen? And watch God move on your behalf. Watch him back up your words. Amen. Watch him back up your words. Amen. He'll do it for you. But you've got to speak. You've got to speak. You've got to open your mouth. You've got to hear yourself say what God said. Amen. Give God praise for the word. Amen. This this era that we're in, in the church and in the body of Christ, I'm going to tell you something. You better know your authority. You better know your authority. You better know 
the word of God. You better know it. Amen. I ain't telling you you got to memorize the whole Bible. I haven't. But there, there's some key areas of your life. There ought to be some word in you. And you should, you should, make, you should make it your mission to get the word of God in your heart. Get it in your heart. Speak it until it's overflowing. Speak it until it becomes your response. You need to get it in your heart. And then when the mountain shows up, you will stand in front of that mountain and you'll say, I command you to get up and go. Throw yourself into the sea. And it will obey you. Amen. That's how God wants us to live on this earth we're going to look at Jesus probably next week he faced situations he didn't call a prayer meeting <laughs> he faced situations he didn't call a prayer meeting he faced situations he didn't go on no three day fast he knew who he was and he exercised his authority Amen. He did not remain silent when he needed to speak. And when he spoke, he believed what he said. And what he said came to pass. EOC, you're going to start speaking and believing what you say is going to come to pass. And you are going to see mountains move. The Holy Spirit just quickened something in me. He says, you want to know something? Uh, he told me to tell you all this. He said, uh, you want to know something about mountains? He said, when Jesus says speak to the mountains, he said, mountains are structures that have been in one place for millennium, thousands of years. He said, tell the people, they may be dealing with some things that have been in their life for a long period of time. He said, but all that mountain's waiting for is for you to open your mouth. And it's going to get up, and it's going to go in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Amen. Close your eyes right now. If you're here today, and you've never received Jesus as your Savior. The Word of God is for believers, Christians, who've received Jesus as their Savior and their Lord. And if you're here today and uh, you're not sure where you stand in your relationship with God, with the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't want you to leave here today without receiving Jesus and you may be here today and you're born again but your life has been kind of going backwards instead of going forward in fact you got born again and you may find yourself doing some things that you did before you got saved again well you need to you need to just rededicate your life that means you just need to go to God and ask forgiveness for your sin and he'll forgive you and so I'm going to lead everyone in here in a prayer. And uh, if, if you're here and you say, I, I don't know where I stand with God. I don't know whether I'd go to heaven or hell right now in my life. Well, when you pray this prayer, if you pray it from your heart, you'll be a child of God and you'll know I'm going to be with God forever. And if you're here and you say, you know what, I got off track as a Christian, but I want to get back on track. If you pray this prayer from your heart, You'll rededicate your life. So everyone, just bow your head, close your eyes, repeat this prayer. Say, Father God, I believe in you. You're the creator of heaven and earth. You created me. You are God. I believe in you. Forgive me for all my sin. I need your forgiveness. But because I know you love me, I receive forgiveness now. For all of my sin, I'm forgiven. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you, Father God. I'm forgiven right now. 
in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God. You died for me, but I believe God raised you from the dead. Jesus, you're alive. So I ask you, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. I receive you, Lord Jesus, into my life now. Thank you, Jesus. I'm saved. I am saved. I am saved. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Heads bowed, eyes closed. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, and no one's looking at you, I just want you to just raise your hand and say that, yeah, I prayed that prayer, and I'm saved now. Just hold up your hand. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. All right? Pastor, I was already saved, but I was, I was kind of getting off track. I asked God to forgive me. That's you? Raise your hand right now. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Amen. Praise God. You can put your hand down. Let's thank God for those who received Christ, who rededicated their life today. Amen, amen. Praise God. Amen. Those of you who raised your hand, uh, after we dismiss what I'd like for you to do, I'm going to ask my altar counselors to come forward at this time. Altar counselors, please come forward at this time. Uh, those of you who raised your hand, please come and see our altar counselors after we dismiss. They've got uh, some information we want to put in your hand. Uh, that'll be a blessing to your life. So come and see them uh, after we dismiss. If you have a prayer request or a prayer need, come and see our altar counselors after we dismiss. All of our first-time guests, would you give me a wave? Your first time here? Just give me a wave. I'm so glad y'all came today. Amen. What, I would, what I'd like to do at this time is I would like to release our first-time guests to go to our hospitality center. So if this is your very first time here, uh, if someone invited you, they're more than welcome to go with you. Would you gather your belongings, come out into the aisle, come forward, and you'll be directed to our hospitality. Let's welcome all of our first-time guests. Come on, make them feel welcome, BLT. Thank you all so much for being with us. Thank you so much for being with us. Welcome. Bless you. like to uh, attend a very brief, about 15, 20 minute new members orientation, or if you filled out that card in your bulletin to join our church and you'd like to come, you fill the card out to become a member and you'd like to get your membership card, you can get that card today. If you have any questions about becoming a member, see the young lady all the way over to my left and she can address any membership questions that you have after we dismiss. Uh, we are water baptizing today. Everybody say we water baptized. Jesus commanded his disciples. One of his final instructions before he went back to heaven was to baptize believers. That was one of his final instructions. And if you're a Christian and you have not been water baptized, you need to be obedient to Jesus and be water baptized. Maybe you got baptized years ago and, and uh, you rededicated your life and you, you know, you're at a new place in your life and you like to be water baptized again you can be now here's the thing here at embassies of Christ you can be water baptized you don't have to be a member of our church we have towels clothing uh, we have caps for you to keep your hair dry everything you need to be water baptized and if you would like to be water baptized after we dismiss see the young man over there with the sign that says baptism this way Follow him after we dismiss to the baptism area. Amen. And those of you who raise your hand for salvation, uh, you, you need to be baptized. Amen. So just follow them. If you have a testimony where God has blessed you, uh, come and share that testimony with Maisha. She'll be up at the front of the church. Uh, 
yesterday, just yesterday, uh, two people came up with testimonies about that 52 blessing that Bishop Hilliard uh, released over us. Uh, and uh, both of them are like day 51 and, and the breakthrough came. So uh, come and share your testimonies with Maisha. Uh, it'll be a blessing. We'll put them on our website and it'll just be a blessing. Don't forget, after second service, uh, the Lake County Assessor will be here talking about property tax appeals. Uh, also, no service Wednesday night. Uh, see y'all all at 9 o'clock. Thanksgiving morning for a one-hour service. And then uh, care leaders, please make yourself available in the foyer. And uh, if uh, you're here and you want to meet your care leader, make sure you stop out there in the foyer so that you can see them. Amen. Those who uh, receive Jesus, we have a, a birth certificate that we'd like to give you. It just identifies the day that you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So please come up and see our altar counselors and you can receive them. Amen? Praise God. Father, we just thank you so much for our time together today. And thank you for this awesome word. <clears throat> thank you for showing us the significance and the power that we have in our mouth. Father, thank you for the authority that you've given us to exercise on the earth with our mouth. And thank you that our mouth allows us to build our faith up in you, in Jesus' name. Seal this word, Holy Spirit. Let a great harvest of faith and authority come to our lives from this word. Now, Father, as we leave this place, release your angels to go before each and every one here. Provide safe passage as we go to our homes and our various destinations. We'll return to give your name praise, and I call the people in this place blessed, highly favored of the Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.